We have so much to unpack in this video. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis, and we are going to talk about a lot of things here. First and foremost, potential tropical cyclone 16 likely going to bring big time tropical storm formation to a lot of the mid-atlantic into the northeast then we're going to go further west twice first to the plains there's going to be active severe weather through the weekend and then a big time atmospheric river coming into the pacific northwest a lot of rain coming our way there and then we'll end the video with an update on that system that could threaten the caribbean things are much more positive but i'm going to show you the latest on invest 90l that has been designated by the national hurricane center so we have our hurricane models being run on it before we get into the latest on PTC 16. Still likely to become a tropical storm. You have to hit subscribe. Please do that. If you happen to find this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. Out a lot. Thank you guys so much for hitting that subscribe button and for all the new subscribers. Really appreciate the conversations we've been having. In the comment section, post where you're tuning in from in the comment section right now. All right, so here is the latest from the Hurricane Center. Again, expected to become a tropical storm, even if it doesn't, even if it stays a subtropical storm or if it stays a non-tropical storm which it is right now if it is a subtropical storm that hybrid storm or if it does become fully tropical impacts are going to be the same so don't be kind of caught off guard with okay hey it's not a tropical storm or hey it is impacts are going to be the same it's going to do the same thing so again likely coming ashore sometime on saturday morning in between Hatteras and Wilmington. So we're going to watch for that. I want to show you the future radar now. And this will kind of time things out. Conditions along the coast are going to get kind of ugly through the rest of Friday and then into Friday evening especially. You saw that little curl here. Here is the spiral. Some nasty weather in and around Wilmington. That's going to really get all the way, maybe even as far to the west as Charlotte as well. And then it kind of lifts up north for us into Virginia. So Norfolk into D.C. into uh, parts of Richmond as well. New York City. And then look at all the heavy rain coming our way into Boston, Massachusetts, into Cape Cod, into Long Island. New Haven, Connecticut, we're going to get wet this weekend. And then this is eventually going to lift up into parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, and then Maine. So it's going to be a wet weekend for us, all courtesy of the system, whether it gets a name or not. So I want to show you some of the rainfall forecasts. And what we're most concerned about this, of course, is going to be to the eastern Atlantic coast, really from Wilmington into Hatteras uh, to parts of eastern North Carolina into Virginia, up towards D.C., maybe eastern Pennsylvania as well. You see Rehoboth Beach pushing three inches of rain. I do think a widespread two to four inches of rain is going to be coming our way where you see the red and where you see this kind of orange color popping up, that's where we could have isolated three or four inches plus. So again, just keep that in mind. We could have some flooding issues right on through the eastern seaboard uh, Friday night into Saturday and then through the rest of your weekend. So just keep that in mind. So that's the rain side of this, but there's also going to be a wind component to this. And this little thing could get aggressive right at the end. There's some indications this could strengthen right on into uh, a landfall later on on Saturday morning. So again, just be mindful of that. Look at the winds. Again, it's nothing too crazy in the wind department. I think right around the center, though, we could get some wind gusts maybe pushing 70 miles an hour. So you see 46 mile per hour wind gust later on today. That's going to be Friday. And then you see what happens later tonight. So that's some of that push, those outer bands, if you will, coming through. So Wilmington and Hatteras, we're into that 40 to 60 mile per hour wind gust ballpark. And I think for the most part, that's what this system produces, 40 to 60 mile per hour gusts. You see that through Virginia Beach to Rehoboth Beach. Look at this as we get into Saturday, and this is going to be lunchtime. Rehoboth Beach, we're gusting to near 60 miles an hour. Same deal for us in, to Atlantic City. And then those gusts progressively move up the eastern seaboard. That's going to be Saturday at 8 o'clock in the evening where we have wind gusts anywhere from 30 to 40, maybe even 45 miles per hour on Nantucket. I think there's a shot there as well to get even higher than that. So again, just keep that in mind that even though it's maybe a potential tropical cyclone still, which is non-tropical because it has the potential to be that or a subtropical system or a tropical storm impacts are going to be the same. We're going to go west now. Kind of a weird severe weather threat likely unfolding here for a lot of the plains, the upper Midwest, Southern plains as well. There's the severe weather threat. You see that kind of green color there. That's that marginal risk. And anytime we have a land falling tropical system, we do have the risk for tornadoes as well. So really from Salisbury, Baltimore, really south of Baltimore towards DC, Norfolk, and then into Elizabeth City, uh, in a Moorhead city, that's where we're going to be watching for that severe weather threat. The bigger threat for a severe weather comes with an upper level system from about Sioux Falls uh, through Des Moines in St. Joseph, Columbia, 
Missouri into Wichita, Kansas, and then into Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, towards uh, the Texas border as well. That marginal risk in green, the slightly higher risk, again, to that level two, that's that slight risk, two out of five on the severe weather scale. I want to show you the future radar as well and show how this comes together, at least likely comes together. This is 4 o'clock on your Friday, so this is September 22nd. This is uh, later on on Friday. You see just some scattered showers, nothing severe. We are going to watch that. Look at the snow, though. Let me bring this full and kind of show you there. It goes kind of spiraled around uh, Jackson, Wyoming towards Yellowstone uh, National Park as well. Could get snow on the higher elevations. You still see some blue there popping up. That is some snow on the higher elevations again of Wyoming. This is 5 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. So we have some heavy rain to the west of Pier. We have some heavy rain towards uh, to the west of Green Bay right around Minneapolis and Duluth. And then the main severe weather risk starts to come into fruition starts to materialize a little bit here is our big area of low pressure pretty much sitting out right on top of here and then here we have our first cluster of thunderstorms in southwest uh minnesota closer to pipestone closer uh to the west of minneapolis south of alexandria out to the western side of the state of minnesota you see that flare-up continue eventually by the time we get towards seven o'clock that heavy rain even the potential for a few strong storms start to push through minneapolis towards austin minnesota towards rochester minnesota des moines we're going to see that as well uh the opportunity for those storms and then you see the bigger flare-up this is late on your saturday evening as well look at that Missouri, Springfield. These are these little clusters. So the tornado threat is not zero with here, but anytime we get these clusters of storms that pop up like this, it limits the isolated nature, of course, of these storms. And these big supercells that we see during tornado season like to be selfish, as I like to say. They want all the atmospheric ingredients for themselves. When they have competing cells like that, it's a little bit harder for them to take advantage of everything that the atmosphere is giving them. So more likely, these clusters that could produce some big-time hail and some damaging winds. But again, that tornado threat is not zero. So we're going to be watching for a little bit of that as well. Now we're going to go further west. Now we've had a lot of new friends tuning in from the Pacific Northwest. So I wanted to touch on this, that we're going to have some pretty active weather, especially from the second half of the weekend into early next week here is our materializing severe weather threat anyway see the green that's the higher moisture from the water vapor imagery you see that swirl that's our upper low that's going to eject into that direction but we are going to be focused here for the pacific northwest we have a big time what we call atmospheric river developing off the coast off the west coast of the united states now we call it an atmospheric river because in the atmosphere it basically looks like we have a river this is the forecast model now and it, it shows See that's that net, uh, that little strip here, that very narrow strip of green. That is the atmospheric moisture that kind of looks like a river and kind of works its way in. So you see that little swirl here. There is our area of low pressure, the upper low, responsible for that. And then you see that very narrow ribbon of moisture coming through. So it's that focused area of moisture. That's why we call it an atmospheric river, just kind of plowing right through. So on the ocean side, on the Pacific side, uh, to the to the west of the mountains, that's where we get all the rain. The moisture just comes in, hits the mountains, get lifted up. It condenses even further. And that's where we're really going to be looking for that flood threat for as we get into Sunday, Monday, and then really Monday through Wednesday. You see kind of another one work its way through. And this includes us in Northern California too. This is on Wednesday at noon. There's all the greens. We have a ton of moisture uh, to play with here as, again, these kind of parade of atmospheric moisture trains come on through the atmospheric rivers i should say work its way through now the rainfall amounts don't look too too impressive that's because these are the, the main cities that kind of aren't right along the coast so we are going to double or triple these in some instances especially here towards british columbia where you see that yellow popping up and we could be talking about three to six inches of rain maybe more than that and then kind of this bullseye to the west of seattle and the lower elevations again anywhere kind of at the base of the mountains once that moisture is getting lifted and then we get extra enhancement of that rain that's where we're going to see those higher totals but a lot of rain coming towards the pacific northwest and even parts of northern california as well from these several atmospheric rivers that start to work their way back on through all right my friends in the caribbean now we're going to talk about you, and I have better news. We talked about this yesterday, that in all likelihood, we would start to see this thing turn towards the end. The GFS was kind of the lone outlier. We did have the Canadian model showing this, getting into the Caribbean, and the Canadian is still the lowest. I will show you that in just one second. But here is Invest 90L. Again, here is PTC 16 out here. 
And this is likely going to become our next tropical depression over the next few days. But you see that red blob again. It was kind of focused right towards the Caribbean yesterday. In our video on September 21st, Hurricane Center now kind of tilting it back a little bit. Because it looks like it's going to have a better shot, better opportunity to take its first pathway out. Remember, we showed you the steering currents, and we talked about it had two ways out. One was before the Caribbean islands. The next one was before the Bahamas. So it looks like it's going to take the first exit. Cautiously optimistic anyway. So here we go. This is blossoming Invest 90L, likely to become our next tropical depression of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. It's an invest that means area of investigation to go from 90 to 99. L is the Atlantic tag that represents the basin. You see what happens with the models. So the Canadian one out to lunch, that is your green line here. This is the outlier that keeps it slow. Remember yesterday, the GFS was down in here, wanted it towards Puerto Rico. We thought that was a little too far south. Now, though, a crazy turn of events. This purple line is your GFS, so it is way out here. So a huge kind of shift. It was just un it was not characterizing what was going on with the development of this system properly. It's been having some big time issues this year. Uh, one of the more popular models, so Hur Hurricane Center uses this one a lot, but this is going to be the TVCon, that consensus model in orange, and that also kind of lifts it up and out. So we like that. So cautious optimism again for the Northeast Caribbean and Caribbean in general. Uh, we're going to keep a close eye on it in case it misses its opportunity to take that exit. And I'm going to show you why. This is the European model, and this is where we have our developing system right here. It keeps it weak. At this point, we may have a tropical depression. Maybe may, it might still be an open wave at this point. It was looked like it was close at that point from the model depiction. This is September 27th, and I mean, it is close to the Northeast Caribbean. It's just in the north of us in Barbados. It's north and east of us uh, towards the Virgin Islands as well. It does take that little tick up, but then it just kind of stalls there a little bit for a couple of days because it's finding itself in the middle of the Bermuda Azores High right there. And then another big chunk of high pressure that's going to be working off of North America. So it's in no man's land. It's waiting for something to be picked up. So that's why we always have to just keep that in the back of your mind. The steering currents are, I mean, we're looking at October 2nd here. So we need to get some better data in here. Cautious optimism, though, when we're looking at this, that it is going to take its first row out. And again, Bahamas and the United States, I think we're doubly good because this guy should shove it off if it even got close. But again, cautious optimism as we take a look at Invest 90L, likely to become a depression maybe over the weekend, maybe early next week. We are watching it closely, though, for the Caribbean to see what becomes of that one. Again, cautiously optimistic. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to stay updated on all things weather, especially again as we venture through the rest of hurricane season, please hit subscribe. We'd love to have you along for the ride. If you hit that little notification bell, it'll let you know anytime we post new content. And we will catch you next time.